it's one of those days where I jump from different places to different places. <sighs> Grace and peace to you from the radiant light of the divine in all its infinite forms. May the whisper of our ancestors, the courage of those who came before us, and the boundless joy of chosen family fill this space with strength and celebration, and let the church say, Amen. Happy Pride. It's the last day of this month. It's truly a celebration to celebrate pride here in church, a place that can sometimes, and more often than not, feel hurtful for the LGBTQIA people. We know that too often their voices, my voice, haven't been heard, and their identities, my identity, have not been embraced. But today, we celebrate the beautiful diversity of our community, knowing that God's love is for everyone. Today, I stand before you not just as your minister of music and worship, but also as somebody who proudly identifies as queer, the Q in the LGBTQIA+. This word queer might be strange to some of you, but for me, it's a powerful term of self-affirmation. It represents the beautiful rainbow of identities within my community, and the message I bring is one of hope, love, and acceptance. The good news is for everyone, regardless of who you love, how you identify, or how you express yourself. So I want to invite you on a journey, an exploration of this love, this ever-expanding purpose. Forget, God who didn't, uh, forget a God who dictates reality. Instead, imagine a divine dance. And we're good at that with our Trinitarian doctrines that we hold in this church. This is a co-creating God where our relationships are brushstrokes. It's this unfolding masterpiece that God's love is the constant ground, a love that transcends our limited understanding. This love embraces all creation, including the magnificent tapestry of human experiences. As we celebrate pride today, let's see each other not just as individuals, but as a vibrant expression of that ongoing artisticness that is God. Deal? All right. Our scripture might be unfamiliar territory for some. It comes from the book of Esther, a story cherished by our Jewish siblings during Purim, a spirited celebration of liberation. While not a typical Christian text, Esther ta Esther's tale speaks powerfully to the themes that resonate with all of us, and that's courage, defying oppression, and finding our voice. Similar in the Psalm 139, which reminds us that God knows us intimately and loves us uniquely. Esther's story offers a powerful affirmation, but both narratives celebrate the beautiful diversity of God's creation and the freedom to be authentically ourselves. Interesting enough, unlike most biblical accounts, we're not sure if the book of Esther happened. It's just kind of that story that we want to put our faith in. It departs from traditional themes, focusing less on God's covenant, which is most of our Hebrew scriptures, our Old Testament, and more on the power of courage and defying, or defying injustices. This aligns beautifully with the Jewish tradition of celebrating Purim. Purim is a joyous occasion marked by costumes and noisemakers and lively celebrations. I remember in my youth, I was actually asked to accompany a synagogue in our community, and they were doing a 50s-style retelling of Esther. So it's a very common thing to see it done in this dramatic reading-type way. This all celebrates the Jewish heritage, their community, which again beautifully resonates with the spirit of Pride Month. Just like Esther, who risked everything to speak her truth, we too are called to find our voices. Let us respectfully use this story as inspiration to challenge systems of silence and marginalization and to advocate for ourselves and all who yearn to be seen and heard. In doing so, we celebrate the breathtaking mosaic of human experience and the freedom to be authentically ourselves. Queen Esther is the LGBTQIA experience. Just like many in my community, Esther faced powerful leaders whose decrees could mean life or death. 
Imagine the fear that gripped Esther. Here she was, a young Jewish woman living in a foreign land, married to a pagan king. The very act of revealing her heritage could have put her life and the lives of her people at risk. The internal struggle between duty and fear mirrors again the struggles of many LGBTQIA plus individuals. The fear of rejection, discrimination, and violence can overshadow the desire to be true to oneself. But just like Esther hiding her identity, many LGBTQIA plus people feel pressure to conform to societal expectations, fearing the consequences of being open about their true selves. Esther's initial hesitation to approach the king uninvited underscores the imbalance of power. Aware of the king's violent nature and the risk of approaching him unannounced, she embodies the power, powerlessness that many queer people face when advocating for themselves. Just as Esther needed a platform or a sign of approval from the king, queer people need more authority and more of a stronger voice to challenge societal norms and discriminatory laws. This is where allies can do their part to listen more, amplifying those voices and help them reach full inclusion and acceptance. Yet, despite the terror of fear, Esther discovered a wellspring of courage she never knew existed. The gravity of her people's plight became a heavy sea upon her heart a chilling reminder of the devastating undertow of inaction. Her bravery reflects the unwavering spirit of queer individuals who choose to ride the crest of authenticity in the face of societal norms. Their actions, though seemingly like pebbles tossed into a vast ocean, have the power to generate ripples of change. These ripples, gathering momentum, become waves that crash again on the shores of conformity, inspiring others to embrace the uncharted waters of their true selves. Esther's story, etched within the sacred canon, transcends all the narratives. It becomes a timeless testament, a beacon across the ages, whispering that even the quietest act of self-acceptance can send forth a wave of transformation. But here's where it gets really good. In the face of paralyzing fear, Mordecai utters a profound truth. Who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. These words transcend the story, offering a powerful call to each of us. Mordecai reminds us that seemingly ordinary lives hold extraordinary purpose. The very challenges and positions we find ourselves in our opportunities to make a difference. Esther, an outsider in the king's court, possessed the power to save her people. Likewise, we too have unique gifts and experiences that can serve the greater good. Mordecai's words resonate not only the ostracized and the queer, but all who yearn for authenticity. Within our vulnerability lies reservoirs of strength waiting to be tapped. Our truest selves, once embraced, become the instruments of more than just an equitable world. This aligns with the deepest yearnings of my faith, with the image of a divine being who celebrates the vibrant tapestry of creation, each thread woven with a unique purpose. We are not called to cower in fear of our identities, but to understand that perhaps we were placed here precisely for such a time as this. A time when the world craves the fullness of who we are. This is the true image of the divine reflected in humanity. The courage to embrace the self we were meant to be, who God created us to be. Following Mordecai's call to find purpose, let's also consider Psalm 139. You formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God isn't a static creator, but a co-creator in a dynamic relationship with the world. These verses resonate with that concept. Our identities are constantly evolving, shaped by our experiences and in, in interactions with each other, just as God interacts with the ever-changing universe. Like a stained glass window, 
Each of us is a vibrant composi composition shaped by the light filtering through it. Our unique experiences, our identities, like the colors and textures of the glass, encompass gender, sexual orientation, strengths, talents, and all sorts of other things that make us beautiful people. All these elements contribute to the magnificent artwork that is our life's purpose. Even in moments of fear, like the lead that separates the colors in the window, they add strength and they add definition to the overall design. Even when the world seems to mute us, this perspective amplifies our inner strength. When faced with marginalization, remember that our ever-evolving identities are like a symphony composed alongside the divine. The ongoing collaboration empowers us to find our authentic voice. Our purpose unfolds as we embrace who we are, allowing us to use our experiences to contribute to a more inclusive and ever-changing world, one powerful note at a time. The scripture tells us again and again that God is love. And as followers of Christ, we are called to extend that love, period. But how do we translate that love into action within the walls of this church? How do we create a space where everyone feels welcome, embraced, and truly seen? Well, there's always three things. First, practice endless grace. We must shed the cloak of judgment and assumptions. Each person carries a unique story, a tapestry woven with experiences and beliefs different from our own. We must respect that. Our role is not to force conformity, conformity, but to illuminate the path where God's love empowers all of us. It's about showing up, not just telling how faith can be a tool for liberation for each individual to reach their full potential. Number two, practice faith in action. Faith is not a passive state, my friends. It's the burning ember that ignites our service. Having faith is just the first step, but true transformation comes through action. Let us step outside these doors and into that world. There are voices to be heard, injustices to be challenged, and those in need who yearn for a helping hand. Volunteer your time. Participate in community. Educate yourselves and others. There's a lot of great books out there, friends, some of which are on that table. Let's not just talk about making a difference. Let's make it happen. Number three, love is the end all and be all. Let the love of God be the cornerstone through it all. We may disagree on, cert disagree on certain things, and that's okay. What truly matters is that we all walk a path of faith together. Let us foster a space where open and respectful dialogue can flourish. This includes actively listening to the experiences and voices of our LGBTQIA siblings. Their stories deserve to be heard, not silenced. Let's create a space where they feel safe, loved, and valued, not ostracized. Remember, love is not a fleeting feeling, but a constant choice. Let us choose love, not just in mere moments of ease, but even when faced with the utmost challenges in our lives. For in the end, it is love that binds us together, a love that transcends differences and creates a true community of faith. Can I get an amen? amen. Finally. Let the dynamic spirit of pride ripple outward like a pebble cast into a small pond. May we carry its message of courage and self-acceptance beyond these walls. Remember Mordecai's words, a beacon in the storm. We are all here for such a time as this. Our unique voices, once hesitant whispers, now hold the power to become crashing waves of change. Let us rise, casting off the shackles of fear and embrace the symphony of our authentic selves. Together, let our voices rise in a crescendo of inclusivity, amplifying the unheard and weaving a vibrant tapestry of love. In this grand chorus, each voice, like a unique instrument, adds its own beautiful melody forever altering the 
landscape of our faith. And for that we say, Amen.